friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I'm so excited today to be talking about one of my reading goals for 2021. Last year, I had a goal of five authors that I wanted to read. Each of these authors, I had more than three, or three or more, I should say, books of theirs on my shelves. And I had 100% success. I read one book, at least one book, from each of those authors. I decided that two of those authors, I was gonna unhaul the rest of them. And I just think that it was such a, a purposeful goal. It, it moved things along. It got me reading books off of my shelves and helped me to decide if I wanted to read more from those authors. You may notice an empty spot on the shelf up there. That's where those five authors and the books that I had from them sat. And so today we're going to do the same thing. Only I have six authors that I own three. Most of them I just have three. One of them I have four. Uh, so I have six authors that I would like to try in 2021. Let's just jump right in. I hope to have as much success in 2021 as I had in 2020. I'm going to start with a middle grade author. I haven't done a middle grade in this goal. This will be the third year that I've done this goal. I wasn't quite as successful in the 2019 as I was last year. but So I'm going to start this year with a middle grade author. And I have three books now by Lauren Wolk. I have... Beyond the Bright Sea, which was just gifted to me in December from my 12 Pleds of Christmas Book Exchange by Lindsay. So Beyond the Bright Sea is about a young girl who grows up on an island, kind of an isolated island, off the coast of Massachusetts. So I think that there's another man and woman possibly who live on the island. I'm not sure much about it, but I'm very excited to give that one a try. I would like to read Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk. This cover is stunning, first of all. I believe this deals with bullying and a veteran and like middle school students who kind of bully this veteran. I'm not really sure much more about it than that, but I just feel like this is going to be a really good one. <laughs> we'll see. And then the third one I have is Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolf. Obviously, they're all by Lauren Wolf. Echo Mountain was gifted to me last year during middle grade March. Owl Crate Jr. sent me a couple boxes so that I could tell you about their business and about that subscription box service that they have. And this was one of the but this book was in one of the boxes that they sent to me and it sounds so good. First of all, I love the cover of this one too. Great covers, Lauren Wolk. Um, this one takes place during the Great Depression and Ellie has to leave their home in town and they move up into like these forests, untamed forests. And about this, it's about this girl who's used to living like near civilization and now has to live up on this mountain. I believe there's kind of this old woman, like a hag they call her, a witchy type woman who lives up on the mountain. And I'm sure Ellie is going to have some encounters with this woman. And it's a little bit of a coming of age, not quite coming of age, we're middle grade, so they're not coming of age yet, but a little bit of getting to know herself and what really matters in life. And it just sounds wonderful. So I'm really excited for that one. So those are my three Lauren Wolk. I am determined to read at least one of them this year. This one is gifted to me from the 12 Plaids of Christmas, so I really want to get to this one. But I also am very interested in the other ones, so we'll see which one I start with. Then for some historical fiction, quite a few of these piles have historical fiction, but I have three Fiona Davis books here. I have The Address, Dollhouse, and The Masterpiece. I'm not sure which one I'm the most interested in. I believe all three of these take place in New York City and I'm very interested in that. I love New York City. I've visited there many, many, many times. Um, the address takes place, it's, I, I feel like it's a bit of a rags to riches. This maid gets an opportunity to manage the Dakota, which is in a big apartment house. Um, and there's also gonna be a dual timeline. so takes place on the Upper West Side of New York. This one, I believe, has like a, a group of models that all live together in the Barbizon Hotel in 1952. And then this one is all centered around the Grand Central Station, um, Grand Central Terminal, uh, which is a very cool, iconic New York building. So I'm really excited about this one as well. Um, so yeah, if you've read any Fiona Davis, do you, do you have a preference? Like which one should I start with? Which one should I kind of push to the top of my priority list? I would love to know that. Um, so there's my second author I would like to read. Another historical author is um, Amy Harmon. And this is an author I just feel like I learned about towards the end of 2020. 
And I have already placed this one, Where the Lost Wander, on my five-star predictions list. So I'm very excited to read this one. It's kind of like an Oregon Trail type story. So I really have a, a good feeling about this one. And then I also just heard Melissa from Libraries and Labradors talk about this one, What the Wind Knows. And she gave this five stars and absolutely raved about it. This one has a little time travel, I believe. We're in 1921. Ireland. This one takes place in Ireland a little bit. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure about it, but I know Melissa absolutely raved about it. And I also saw quite a few people on Instagram who loved who love this author. So I'm very, very interested. I just feel like she's gonna be right up my alley. The third one that I have is from Sand and Ash. This one takes place, it's a World War II, Italy, 1943. Germany occupies much of the country. Two, two children, Eva and Angelo, are raised like family, but they're divided by circumstance and religion. And then I think they come back together a decade or two later. Angelo is a Catholic priest and Eva is a woman with nowhere to turn. The Gestapo are closing in. Angelo hides Eva within the walls of a convent. Okay, I'm in for this story. So in. I love World War II. Okay, so I just feel like Amy Harmon has potential to become a favorite author. And I haven't read anything by her. How can I even say that? But as I read the backs of these, as I hear other people talk about these books, I just feel like I'm gonna absolutely love her. Fingers crossed. I can't cross my fingers, but I'm gonna try because I'm really, I'm really hoping to find a new favorite author in Amy Harmon. It's possible. Okay, totally different, not historical. Well, I think there's a historical element in all of these, but these are Christian fiction and they're a bit like thrillery, gothic-y, but also have that dual timeline that each one has a century between the two timelines. I heard about these again from Chantel at An Intentional Life and I went and got all three from Book Outlet. You can see the little line on them. The more I heard her talking about them, the more I just felt like I had to read them. So I have The Curse of Misty Wayfair, I have The Reckoning of Goss at Gossamer Pond, and I have The House on Foster Hill. And I believe I'm buddy reading this one with Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf in January. So this is already on my January TBR. It'd be awesome to knock off one of these right away in the year. And I think um, Chantel said this is not her favorite of the three, which I'm like, good, I'll start with that and then they'll just keep getting better. <laughs> so I know there's a few more of her books as well. I'm not going to purchase any more until I read at least one of these and know if this is an author that I'm going to like. But I love the idea of a Christian thriller like a christian mystery like a little bit dark a little bit historical a little bit gothic with that faith element i'm i'm here for that it's totally different than what i normally read so jamie joe wright oh did i even say that jamie joe wright is the author of these ones yay we'll see what i think yeah, i'm so excited next i have a male author so far all four of the others have been female authors so i'm mixing it up a little bit with billy coffee so i have three books by billy coffee i have um when mockingbirds sing i found this at ollie's for 2.99 <laughs> i couldn't resist sorry if i moved i just had to clear some storage off of my phone i really need a new phone okay the three books by billy coffee that i have are when mockingbirds sing steal away home and there will be stars and these are not historical i believe these are all contemporaries i know that this one has a little bit of a magical realism type feel to it but i don't really know anything else about them i know this one was gifted to me from the fiction guild back when that was a thing from thomas nelson uh, i was a part of this group where they sent me books occasionally and this is one that they sent to me um, so i really would like to get to this one and i think both of the other two I found at Ollie's for super cheap. Yeah, $3.99 and then $2.99. So I am very interested in giving Billy Coffee a try. And I have three of them. So am I going to like them? Am I going to unhaul them? I don't know. Let's read one and see if I like his writing style and find out. Have you guys read Billy Coffee? What do you think? Will I like him? And finally, I have one last author. So this is the sixth author. This year I'm doing six. And I have four books by Pam Jenoff. I've heard a ton about two of them and then not so much about the other two. So I have, whoo! So I have here uh, The Diplomat's Wife, Last Summer at Chelsea Beach, The Lost Girls of Paris, and The Orphan Tale. Obviously these are the two, not obviously, but these are the two that I've heard of the most and I'm probably the most excited to read. I think this one has to do with a circus, World War II, hiding 
Jewish kids in the circus or something like that. This also has to do with World War II and, or does it? Yeah, 1946 Manhattan. Friendship and courage centered around three women and a ring of female secret agents during World War II. Like, I'm here for all the female spies in World War II. So I'm very excited for these two. I will, I mean, prioritize these two over these two. But this one, I think these are also World War II stories. So Pam Jenoff is like my queen this year for World War II. When I'm feeling like a World War II, I should look here first. So those are the six authors that I hope to read this year. Pam Jenoff, Billy Coffey, Jamie Jo Wright, Lauren Wolk, Amy Harmon, and Fiona Davis. Let me know what you think. Do you guys do this? Do you buy multiple books by one author and then not read them <laughs> for ages? Ah, I have a problem. But anyways, I would like to read these authors, see if their styles are something that I get on with or not. Let's cross my fingers for a couple favorites. I mean, I'm hoping Pam Jenoff is a favorite and Amy Harmon. Actually, I hope all of them really become favorites of mine. That would be fantastic. So all of these books are going up on that shelf right now. I'm very excited to read them. Let's chat down in the comments below. Which ones do you think I'm going to love? Which ones maybe aren't going to be for me? Have you read any of these books? Have you read any of these authors? What do you think? Let's chat all the things down in the comments below. You guys know I love talking with you down there. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.